Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855 855- 678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. Last week, we caught David Morgan literally on the road, so the audio quality wasn't wasn't up to our usual standards, but we've got him back here now. He's, he's back home, recovered from his trip, and we're talking about has the silver market bottomed and what's the direction of the trend now. David's got some definite beliefs in that. David's always very conservative. When it looks like it's heading to the moon, David's always trying to put the brakes on. And when it looks like it's going to the cellar, David's always talking reason. And for that reason, we've got him on now. Hey, David, how you been? I've been fine. Thank you very much, Kerry. So interesting markets we're living through because last summer this time, we all thought both metals were going to the moon. Except you didn't. You were kind of uh, a little bit reticent about the direction. And now it's a year later, and it looks like you were right about it. Right. Well, you know, I trade as well as invest. I do both. And that's what we have on the website. You have uh, basic services, just basically buy and hold types. And then we have a look over my shoulder service where I show you the kind of uh, position trading that I do. And I was in silver uh, on a break at above 19 and it went up to around the 26 and was stalling out and I got out and then uh, QE2 was announced and I got right back in and rode that from 26 to 48. But once we got into the 30s, 33, 4, 5 in that range, I was warning everybody and my members, the paid people as, you know, primarily, but also on shows like yours, Kerry, that, you know, above 35, I mean, let's be reasonable here. This thing's accelerating. It looks like it's going parabolic. Be careful. If you've got to buy silver, buy some. Don't buy it all. And I was being very conservative all the way up until we peaked right near the very end of April, early May. Gold peaked later uh, in the year in September, as you said. But uh, those type of moves usually take time to consolidate, and that's where we're at now. Having said all that, I really think that the bottom is in for the mining equities. I'm fairly certain, but again, being conservative, think that uh, we may have seen the bottom in the metals. They could get tested again. No one knows. The area to watch, as I said on uh, either your show or another not very long ago, is look at the $26 level for silver. If it's pierced to the downside, we get a close below 26, and you see that a few times in a row or even uh, a couple times within a week or two, that's a good indicator that it's going lower. I don't see that. I think it's bounced off that low 26 level enough times that we've got that that is it. it. But again, time will tell. Very much been humbled by the market over the years. Uh, Did good work. I get calls right often, but not every time. Yeah, well, I think the other technical indicator, and I'm not a technical guy, and one of the things I like about your investing style is you combine both. And, you know, you're not blindly technical and you're not blindly fundamental because fundamentals in the long run, we all know where this thing is heading, but there's a lot of short run to be had before we get to the long run. And now we're at this $28 mark where it just doesn't seem to want to go below 28. And we also saw in gold this morning, it was down uh, seven and a half, eight dollars $8. Now it did an upside reversal and it's over, it's at 16.22. 23. So these markets, they bounced along that support level, that $26 support level for close to a year without going through it very often. And when it did, it instantly popped back up. So I tend to agree with you that it just seems the technical indicators are pointing to at least a short to medium term rally, even though a lot of the cycle guys tell me that the rally hasn't been confirmed yet. 
I would say that's it. I mean, I'm too, again, conservative, keep using that word, to uh, say the bottom's in for the metals themselves. But, uh, yeah, we need confirmation. I'm looking for, I just put this out in the Morgan Report, uh, the most recent issue. We get through the end of August, and we're in the 28 to 29 range. Uh, we've got pretty much an 85% probability that the bottom is in. August is usually the worst month for the for gold, by the way. So right. as it's acting so far, eight, nine days in, 10 days in, it's uh, – I'm happy. I mean, basically, I think we're doing what we need to do to uh, quietly build a base here where the public isn't paying any attention. Then, you know, the end of September, gold sitting there in the high 1600s and silver's above 30. And people that were going to buy silver when it hit 20 and it hasn't are going to wonder what the heck happened. And they'll probably just continue to watch it move in price for entertainment purposes yeah. only rather than get in there. And that annoys me, Kerry, because quite honestly, I think, you know, you know how I think. I think everyone sure. that understands even a portion of what's going on in these markets needs to have some metal. I don't mean all 100 percent in. I don't mean that. I mean, they got to have some exposure to the precious metals. Yeah, agreed, because it's an insurance policy. And just like you wouldn't get into your car and drive it down the road if you didn't have insurance and just like the bank won't let you buy a house uh, or give you a mortgage without casualty insurance, fire and flood on your house. It's the same thing. No financial advisor should let you be investing in anything without that, that 10 to 15% insurance policy. Because if it all goes to hell pretty quickly, and it very well could, we, nobody knows when, that 10 to 15% is going to more than make up for all the losses that you suffered in your other investments. At least that's my take on it. That's exactly true. If you go back to the 1970s bull market and you had a 10% exposure to gold only, not even counting silver, which did much better than gold during that bull market. Uh, if everything went to zero and it didn't, real estate didn't go to zero, the stock market didn't go to zero. But this, if you made the assumption that they did and you had 10% weight in gold, it would make up for all of those losses. So certainly, in fact, I want to pound on that a little bit harder Kerry, uh, Ibbotson and Associates did a study, a portfolio analysis years ago, and you can get the summary on uh, from uh, Nick Baraschef, uh, oh, sure. our management group. And 15% is the correct weighting, 15% in metals, not in mining shares. And uh, that's a fact. So that's the best performance in a portfolio in the long run is to have that weighting. So you know, again, I'm uh, an advocate of honest money. I'm an advocate of gold and silver, but nonetheless, you know, an objective research outfit that's so respected as Ibbotson and Associates says, look, here's the ma math. Here's the deal. You've got to have this kind of exposure if you're really serious about investing. Yeah, and the other thing is that from the – I actually have a book coming out, and I haven't quite settled on the name. Uh, somebody suggested uh, F Wall Street, go for the gold. I haven't quite embraced that yet because I do want to be taken seriously, but it has a certain charm to it, you have to admit. But <laughs> the, the point is 1% to 2% of the entire world's wealth is held in metals right now. So if the paper, work, paper worth, the paper wealth of the world dissipates, and let's be optimistic and say it goes down by half, that means that gold and silver, precious metals, will now be – 4% of the world's wealth. And if if paper wealth was to dissipate by 50%, the rush into the precious metals, you'd probably be looking that the world's wealth would be somewhere in that 15 to 20% range due to the appreciation of, of the metals. And we're talking just the direct metals here, no, uh, no mining stocks. I mean, there was a guy who bought this outfit, an Egyptian billionaire, La Mancha Resources, gold mining, he bought it, he wrote a check for half a billion dollars, and he bought it effectively for $50 an ounce in the ground. And, you know, that guy's a billionaire. Now, I don't know how he got that way or whatever, but he's probably got some pretty smart people working for him. And he figured out that this is the best protection for his wealth to literally own the mine. And, you know, the rest of us can't do that, but we certainly can own a little bit of the production of the mint. That's for sure. You got it. In fact, Kerry, uh, the latest um, pick that we have in the Morgan Report is a company that's a growth company, and they pay dividends in silver and gold, literally silver and gold. <laughs> it's I wrote the end, and you know me, I'm pretty conservative. Again, there's that sure. word, but I said, look, this is a 
dream come true. I've been asked again and again and again, hey, how do I get uh, you know, a dividend? And I'd certainly like to get it in metal. Well, this company has come through with that. Very, very high on this company. It is a speculation at this point, but I think anyone that really wants to make money, the reason I deal so much in the mining shares is there's so much leverage and there's so much upside. There's much more upside in the mining shares right now than there is in the metals. There's a lot of upside in the metals. But if you want to catch the people that bought silver at five bucks and the people that bought gold at 300 like me, the way to do it now is to get in the mining equities. That's where you're really going to rock and roll. I know it sounds counterintuitive because we've been low for so long. These things keep getting beaten up. But you want to buy when there's blood in the streets. Believe me, Carrie, look out your window. It's there. It's time to oh. continue to buy. In fact, I think the bottom is in, as I said earlier on, on this program. Yeah. And – we might test the bottom again, but uh, I don't think we're going below it. I don't know. I'm the worst forecaster around, but I am a trend follower. And the long-term trend here, there's no question about it. And these mining shares are are the sole purview left of the value plays on the street. They're trading at such tremendous discounts to the metal in the ground. and And I'm talking the ones that are close to production. Even ones that are in production are trading as if they were exploration companies. You know, they're all trading at huge discounts, and it's almost the proverbial dartboard. Obviously, there's better, better sh shares. Some stocks are better. Some companies are better run. But if you bought a uh, a basket of mining stocks and just put it away, that's probably going to do more for you than obviously the physical itself which you should always have but yeah that's really where it's at and uh, you've got a lot of those good buys in the morgan report uh, so i urge everybody go take a look at it the morganreport.com and silver-investor.com i'm a subscriber and uh, david thanks for checking in we will uh, talk to you after labor day enjoy the uh, rest of the summer lazy period because I have a feeling after Labor Day, that's when everything hits the fan. Very good, Kerry. Thank you. Be well.